All right, so post lift, after a few days have passed, you gotta go back to the grocery store, man. I gotta eat something. So I've been trimming down for, what is it, about probably seven weeks now? I'm on like the 50th day of the cut. I mean, this isn't like a competition prep. You know, I'm really just kind of doing a, basically just a break, right? From bulking up, I need a two-ish month cut, kind of re-sensitize my appetite. But I'm getting ready to start to bulk up again. So the grocery store list is going to change dramatically over the coming weeks. But for now, the name of the game is, you know, I'm trying to eat foods with a large amount of satiation. You know, it's going to make me feel full, but is it going to have a lot of calories, right? You know, if I eat a big ass bowl of uh, cinnamon toast crunch, sure, I could get full, but it's going to have like seven, eight hundred calories worth of, you know, carbs, fats, a little bit of proteins too. You know, if I could get that same level of fullness with like, you know, some keto bread sandwiches, some super lean ground beef, some stuff like that, right? Which option do you think is going to let me eat less food during the day, be able to stay under my calorie deficit, right? And then lose fat. I think it's pretty obvious. So let's start off with uh, not ideal. So I've been doing the carb master milk. And interestingly enough, the chocolate variety is not in here. You know, the chocolate milk has kind of become, I wouldn't call it a staple of the bulking diet, but it's, I'll say this, it's always stocked in the fridge. So typically I would want some of the Carb Master chocolate milk. You know, a calorie smart option compared to regular, because you gotta think, you know, a regular cup of chocolate milk, it's got, well actually I guess we got it right here, let's take a look. What's one regular cup of chocolate milk, calorie-wise? 170. 170 calories. And that's something. That will add up quick. But one cup of the calorie smart chocolate milk, 60 calories, 70. So basically slicing it in half. You know, I can take a couple cups of chocolate milk with the uh, most of the carbs removed, and that's going to end up working out perfectly for me. But that's kind of just as a treat, you know, just because I like it. So, in terms of just, and well, I didn't mean to start this off with just drinks, but that's kind of the side we're starting on. Again, the calorie smart option, the calorie smart option, the zero sugar lemonade, the zero sugar punch, stuff like that. You know, any food which you can find a lower calorie version of. <laughs> it's <laughs> just by taste. I swear, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Maybe not you specifically, but like when people say they taste the difference between like a diet soda and a regular, I, I don't know. It just doesn't hit me that hard. So next up is going to be eggs. Ah, oh, jeez. So typically I'd want to get the carton to egg whites because I'm like, if you're getting a dozen eggs whole and then cracking them just for the whites and throwing the yolks away, I mean, you're just kind of wasting money. The egg whites in a carton are much better, but it looks like they're totally out. So I guess I'll settle for a standard dozen. So typical lifter, let's just say lifter vocabulary, right? If you've kind of counted your macros for long enough, you know an egg white, 3.6 grams of protein, and a whole egg is 6 grams of protein, but 5 grams of fat. So, again, I guess it is a little bit different, but going for the calorie smart option, getting rid of the yolks, maybe, okay, maybe throw in one just for the omega-3s, but, you know, a dozen egg whites versus a dozen whole eggs, that is an incredibly different meal in terms of the caloric load. So let's cut to uh, let's cut to some meats. All right, I lied. We just passed by another classic move that I love doing for the diet. So just in general, I'm a PB and J fan, but a standard peanut butter and jelly sandwich is not conducive with you know 
a fat loss diet. But, I mean, I, the whole theme of this, I guess the whole theme of this trip is the calorie smart options, right? Sugar-free jelly, ingredient one, and normal peanut butter, one tablespoon, just one little spoon scooped out, that's what? 190 calories. That's a big hit. Normal peanut butter, I mean, unless you want it just as a treat and you want to deal with the fact that you just took a 200 calorie hit for your whole day, it's, it's not conducive with a freaking diet. But again, calorie smart option. This is the one I pretty much go to the most. The PB Fit powdered peanut butter. So what ends up being about the same amount of peanut butter as one tablespoon there. Uh, it's a little bit of an extra hassle because, I mean, what is this? It's powder, right? You're going to have to put it into a bowl, add a little bit of water, mix it up, sort of reconstitute it. But for the same amount of peanut butter, for the most part, just kind of looking at it, 60 calories, right? You almost cut it in, well, it's a third of the calories as the other one. And most is coming from the protein in here. And combined with the protein in the wheat or in the, uh, in the bread, you know, you're going to get a reasonably complete amino acid array. Because typically I'm not one to count proteins from you know, breads or incomplete protein sources. Obviously they still have calories, but you know, when I look at my 250 grams of protein that I want to get in per day, I want to get it from a dedicated source, like a meats or well, like a meat, fish, turkey, bread. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, not bread. No meat, turkey, fish, eggs, dairy, right? I don't want to be a, you know, a vegan hater, but for the most part, at least in my opinion, I think animal products are the way to go. So let's finish off the PB&J ingredients by cutting to the bun section. All right, so for most of these, right, when I talk about the low calorie or the diet version, for the most part so far, they've been pretty comparable. Like if someone were to pour me a cup of the zero sugar lemonade and compare it to a cup of the full sugar lemonade, you know, I doubt I'd be able to guess the difference. Same thing with the little jelly. The peanut butter, it is a little different. It doesn't taste so rich, but it's still good. Now, with the keto bread, slightly different story, I will say. Slightly different story. This is my, this is probably my favorite live carb smart buns. So let's, uh, let's get another hamburger bun just to compare it to. Uh, where are they? One moment. There we go. All right. So the carb smart option, one gram of fat per bun, right? the full carb, two and a half. That's pretty comparable. But going down to the total, the total carbohydrates, right? 21 grams of total carbohydrates. But you got to look a little bit deeper. Dietary fiber, right? Insoluble dietary fiber, 18 grams, right? So when you read that, the insoluble fiber, it's not getting digested. You're not breaking that down as energy. It's kind of just passing through your system. So even though in technicality it counts as like carbs, there's no calories, at least a negligible amount. So you got to do a little bit of a little bit of math, a little bit of subtraction, the total minus the insoluble fiber. So each one of these buns is going to have three grams of carbs compared to 30 over here, 10 times less carb load. I mean, come on, it's a no brainer. So. That is pretty classically combined with the powdered peanut butter and the jelly. So now we can cut to some meats. All right, so when it comes to my meats of choice, you know, when you come over to this side of the deli, you're pretty much smacked in the face with beef, chicken, and pork. Now, in terms of the pork, I, I'm just not really a massive fan. You know, it's good protein, right? It's meat, but I'm just not a massive pork fan, so I'm gonna, I'm going to pass by that. The beef is probably your best bet 
I hear a lot of good shit about uh, bison as well. So sometimes I'll get some ground bison, but you know, uh, it's whatever. So when it comes to steaks, this is another situation where my choice is dictated by the state of which I'm dieting in. If I'm bulking, I want a full fat ribeye. You know, I don't mind 40 or however many, however many grams of fat are in a ribeye at once. Because I want those extra calories, man. I'm trying to pack some weight on. But if I'm cutting down, I'm trying to do the absolute opposite. So I'm looking for one of the leaner cuts. So pretty much one of my favorites is these top round steaks. Typically about a pound each. So I'll usually cook the full pound at once and then just eat a half pound, you know, then plus and a little bit later. Yeah. Kind of lets me do a little bit of prepping, even though I'm not really a huge like meal prepper. But I mean, let's just look at this visually compared to a, uh, to a ribeye. You don't have to be a scientist to tell that this has got way more fat than this. So I'm thinking two pounds of this ought to last me well. And I still, you know, I like the ground beef too, but I kind of want to change it up a little bit. If I were to do all steaks or all ground beef, I feel like I'd get a little bit tired of one or the other. So getting over to the ground beef, what I'm looking for now, again, I'm trying to get as little fat as possible. You know, I'm aiming for the leanest type. So the leanest I've ever seen is 97. And it looks like right here, yeah, 96%, not bad. Plus when you strain it, you know, as you definitely should, just to get a little bit of that extra fat off, typically my protocol is go straight from the pan into an actual strainer, kind of shake it around a bit over another bowl. You know, I'm a little bit lax, like <laughs> it would be kind of tricky to find out exactly how much fat you separated from the beef because you'd, you'd have to account for like the water weight and whatever. For the most part, when it says in a single serving, or let's just simplify it for the whole package, 18 grams of fat, I usually just cut that in half when I account for the amount of fat that got strained off. Because you're never gonna strain all the fat out, but you do get a pretty considerable chunk out by straining the ground beef. So, man. Got some drinks, some meats, my little PB&Js that I like. I'm trying to think of what else I need. I just remembered. I just freaking remembered. Let's get over there. All right, so found another thing on the way. Whoa. I love these pre-chopped salad mixes, too. I mean, you know, I pretty much make sure I hit all my micronutrient needs by way of you know, taking my wide array of multivitamins. Obviously, you should get a solid amount of your micronutrients just from your food, but I can almost guarantee you've got some deficiencies, be it D3, iron, magnesium, whatever. You know, I, <laughs> I don't understand why you wouldn't want to take your multivitamin, man. I mean, just get it as a gummy and you have a little treat before you go to bed, it's perfect. But the logic there with the salads, it's really just, food without a lot of calories, you know? Like, I'm not gonna put a full ranch dressing on there, or like an Italian, because you gotta think, you can <laughs> you can have a salad, quote unquote, healthy food, and you can absolutely ruin it by way of adding, you know, 300 calories worth of condiments, or dressing. I forgot you call it dressing for salad. You know, you can have a salad that's 800 calories, if it's got like a chicken cutlet on it, plus a bunch of olive oil, plus like whatever. So, you know, I think people sort of lose a little bit of touch with, I don't even want to say conventionally, let's just say this. I think people put a kind of arbitrary label on some specific kinds of foods just because they're conventionally healthy. But I think a lot of people seriously just lack the connection of how the fact that diet, in terms of the calories, the amount of energy that you're consuming, is the number one factor, which is gonna change how your body looks. So getting back to another treat that I like, I'll always stop for some Kroger sushi, but 
I'm cutting. I can't eat a bunch of sushi. It's like four-ish, 500 calories per pack, you know? But typically, and luckily for me, they'll have one pack where it's just the salmon on top of like some chopped carrots and cucumber. So, and the whole thing, only 100 calories, 20 grams of protein. I love salmon protein, man. Plus you got some omega-3s in there too. So that's sweet. So now all I need is to go get some Sprite Zero. Not for any particular reason, apart from the fact that I just want something sweet to drink on, which doesn't have any calories. And then we can get out of here. All right, so at this point, after going through, I think I've tried to, well, not tried to, but I've gone through, I think, about three, maybe four cutting phases. And across all those, I'm pretty sure I've tried every diet soda available. And for whatever reason, the Sprite Zero just always comes back. Love it. I will grab something else, Joe, just, just for the sake of diversity. One thing that I always thought was kind of freaking weird. Let me see if it actually... Yeah. Would you guess that this has caffeine in it? Like, it's not a lot. It's only 20 milligrams for like, you know, what would be like a can of soda. That is so freaking strange. Because you got to think, if I'm drinking these like, just, just to sip on, I mean, I can finish a two liter in a day. And I can finish a two liter in an hour if I'm just sitting studying or doing whatever. So I don't need to just be taking in a bunch of caffeine for no reason. Just another reason why you got to keep an eye on the nutrition labels on these things. Some stuff will pop up where you least expect it. Zero sugar root beer. Love it. Let's get one more and then I can head to checkout. I love it, but I never see it is diet grape soda. The one Meyer back where I usually live with my parents, it has it. I go through so much of that, it's the best. Actually, I think I'll be good with just the Sprite and the freaking root beer. So common theme, right? Low calorie, smart options. It adds up, man. You could take someone and don't even change the way that they're eating. Don't even tell them to change the amount of foods that they're eating. And just by swapping out, like a soda for a diet soda, buns for the low carb buns, uh, ground beef for the lower, like stuff like that. Just by making those swaps, you could probably put somebody into a solid deficit and they wouldn't even know it. So that's typically my uh, main concern when it comes to dieting, just because, you know, I want to eat what I want to eat. And if there's a little tweak that I can make just to find a specific food that's like, I mean, what I was going to say, just lower in calories. And that's what I want to do. <sighs> now all I'm waiting for is the low calorie Krispy creams to get released. This is going to be in the cart in about two weeks and I'm going to freaking love it. So until then, I'll keep filling up the grocery carts like this, doing my daily cardio, which I hope you're doing, and then making gains, man. That's what we're all here for. So I'll freaking see you next time.